Hello my soccer universe, the sun is setting and it's time to review the action in Austria and Germany over the past week. The algorithms spit out that Leipzig were the best team performing, so I feel a little bit yucky but I'm wearing uh, their jersey. But then, you know, two away wins at uh, Freiburg probably do that and one is sending you to a cup final where you have the chance to uh repeat as a cup champion would be the second trophy ever and the other win actually meant that Freiburg is on a pretty good course to make it back to the Champions League uh qualification that didn't seem all that secure for most of the time up top we still have the title race going on with both uh title contenders winning Dortmund more emphatically so than Bayern but I think it's really a relegation battle in Germany that is most interesting uh, where Schalke are now for the first time in a long time out of the relegation uh, zone and with a shot of make making it there were quite a few uh, big results most of them going against Bochum and a teeny bit against Stuttgart we had a meltdown in Frankfurt despite them making also the cup final um, and yeah I think those are the main headlines out of Germany in Austria not much has changed per se except that Lusk dropped some unnecessary points but there were no position changes but it is now kind of Lusk is in the middle almost qualified for Europe or already if they would have gotten the win um, and up top is still three points between Salzburg and Sturm Lusk is probably not gonna make it into second place they're stuck in third uh, in the relegation battle also um, you know only that Hartberg and all out of it is between Reed and Arta who both got points so there you go I actually want to do it this time around that we go Germany Austria Germany because I really want to start with the German Cup where we had quite the intriguing semi-final however the game that I was really looking forward to between Freiburg and Leipzig did not deliver I was all down that Leipzig had figured out what Freiburg are doing and with two quick goals by Olmo and Henriks, the second one taking care of uh, the disorientation of Freiburg after the first goal, um, setting the course, Griffo is then sent on who probably should have started for Freiburg and in the end it is uh, already ugly scoreline at the halftime, 4-0 Soberschlein and Kunko adding two more. The red card for Guardiol didn't change much on the game, although I think he will be suspended for the final. Uh, Gregorich pulls one back and everyone in Germany, miracle, miracle. I didn't watch at this point anymore. I mean, 2-0 was for me enough. And then I think I watched for about half an hour, the first half hour. And then I said, nah, this is not going any anywhere. I'd rather watch something a little bit more exciting, which in the end, I think the other one was Arsenal Chelsea, which was also not really more exciting. And then 5-1 uh, through a uh, Soboschlei penalty very, very late on. It was really, really impressive stuff what Leipzig were doing. And yeah, Freiburg couldn't get the revenge for the cup final that they should have won. Freiburg, uh, Leipzig had no business winning that cup, but were the luckier team on that day. The other semifinal was a whole lot more exciting. Alas, I didn't watch that one because, you know, Serie A, blah, blah, blah. But uh, Stuttgart actually played a really good uh, first half where they had the lead uh, through Tomas. But right after, Ndik and Kamada within five minutes turned the game around and then a call him a knee penalty in the 77th minute seemingly steers uh, Frankfurt into safe waters. This is a Frankfurt team that has a really bad run in the Bundesliga. However, uh, they seemingly have a cup gene in there, you know, me winning the Europa League last year, now being also good in the, in, the, in the cup, having really good results there. And in both years, the Bundesliga was always kind of, uh, you know, a really rotten season. And I think while it's good to have these successes and potentially win titles, I think it looks better when you're also doing good in the league. But, you know, that's me. Anyway, it seemed safe, 3-1. Um, however, uh, Mio, after Gira CSIS pulls one back just six minutes later, Stuttgart is back into the game. However, then Borna Sosa is sent off with a yellow-red, and it all looks like that Frankfurt is, going, is still safe. But there was a very contentious situation in the box that uh, was not looked at by VAR, and then the referee again didn't go out. And Stuttgart was seething over that uh, the decision because at least half a look at it. And I think the referee looks at that. There will be a penalty for Stuttgart. Stuttgart would like the chances, even with a man down against this Frankfurt 
team. So the final is now Leipzig against Frankfurt. It's the last game of the German club season. Uh, played, of course, in the Berlin Olympiastadion. We all know who are the favorites. It's the energy drink company against the Eagles um, that are favored. That much should be clear. Uh, if we go now over back to Austria, uh, in the relegation battle, I have to say... Um, not much and then quite much happened, but in all these camp games for the relegation round, uh, round and for the uh, championship round, uh, that, you know, it's more or less a, a head-to-head -head between Altrach and Reed. Reed, after the crazy 4-4, where they had a 4-3 lead after being 3-1 down, uh, down at the half and then uh, getting a late equalizer. This time they do it the other way around, getting a deep stoppage time equalizer against Austria Lustenau. Um, but the big one is Hartberg against Gensel, because that is a win that probably put Hartberg into safety. And it's a big enough win to actually send Tirol a little bit into crisis, one has to say. Um, what can I say about uh, Klagenfurt against Lask? Uh, it's drop points. It was a horrid first half with many, many VAR decisions. There should have been potentially an early penalty given for Kla Klagenfurt because uh, there was uh, on Stojkovic a, a handball that I think I've seen many times given. I would have understood it would have given. I was, it was a let off. However, then you give away a very clumsy penalty because Ciaz is with the elbow leaning on a player. Um, there's no way to overturn this one, although it was a soft penalty. Irving uh, is converting that one. It's one that Klagenfurt and Lusk wake up. Should have gotten then a penalty because Nakamura is clearly mowed down in the box. That was not even reviewed. Uh, or it seemingly was reviewed, but I think it was no evidence because the referee already decided it's not. It's not. It was an awful game in the first half with uh, probably not even the undeserved lead for Klagenfurt. Our second half. A lot of pressure from Lask, uh, especially once Fleck and Mustafa came on. They put Klagenfurt under so much pressure without really creating chances, but uh, Klagenfurt couldn't get out of their own half. Mustafa then gets the equalizer from a goal line scramble. I uh, probably should have been gone in, 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 in before. Then more coming on, Lask pressing. Again, this win would have meant that they had already more or less qualified for uh, Europe, had secured the third place. It's still looking very, very good, good that way. And then there was the big chance uh, free kick that hits uh, central defender Lukaneda, who plays it over central defender. Tia is both more or less free on goal and Tia manages instead of uh, hitting the empty net to put it on the post. <coughs> that was the big chance to win that game. And then to make matters worse, Robert Schul, who has been in really good form, so probably our most creative player at the moment, is getting set off with a yellow red. Rather rough decision as well. So yeah, uh, not a happy afternoon. On top of it, Sturm Graz win 2-1 at Austria-Wenner. Game of two halves. Total control by Sturm. Uh, goals by Schneck and Omega setting them clearly on on the way. However, then Paul Tascha uh, pulls one back for Austria-Wenner. And they were then pressing for the equalizer that they cannot find. Which means that Sturm keep the pressure up on Salzburg and also distance themselves further from Lusk at the same time. And Austria Vienna is now level on points with Klagenfurt, so those two Austrias are on the bottom of the table. And then Salzburg um, win 2 1 over Rapid, uh, Koita scoring on both sides of each half. Capaldo is then sent off with two yellow cards in quick succession. I would imagine he, I didn't see the highlights that he was. Um, Mouthing some stuff off to the referee or so, or, or, or so on. Uh, Burgstaller converts a little bit later. Penalty, it's 2-1 in Salzburg are hanging on. I have to say that the Capaldo red card kind of offsets a little bit the red card for Schul because those two teams, Lask and Salzburg, are meeting in the next round and probably two of the, the most two creative, two most creative players for each teams are now suspended. In the standings, um, as I said, nothing has changed. There's no position change, but the distances have changed. Salzburg and Sturm are now still, there is potentially a title fight on, but Sturm Graz will have to win in Salzburg, which they have done before. So it's not that Salzburg more or less nailed on for third place. It's rather unlikely that they will lose that one. If Rapid drop points in any of the remaining four rounds, Lask is in. It is that simple, and for us and uh, head of Austria Vienna and Klagenfurt, this also looks rather, rather good because there's already a 12 point differential. Um, so, even in the head to head, also looks positive 
with those two. On the bottom, we have Alter and Reed in a tussle for relegation with slight disadvantage for Reed there. Um, and for the playoffs, you know, Tyrol is more or less out of that conversation, although they were considered the strongest team uh, based on their recent uh, success. But it will be Austria Lusna who win that one and will host uh, Wolfsburg overall, which I think is rather interesting. Same thing is reflected, of course, in the um, expected standings, where we see now Hartberg with potentially a shot of making it into the playoffs. But I really don't think so. Up, up top, one to three, pretty much set in stone. It's between four, five, and six. Um, that's probably the most interesting part. Upcoming games, we will be at Lask against Salzburg, so um, look forward to a video from there. Not sure if I will do it, then uh, I'll take a Germany video on. Um, if Lars get the win there in the in Europe, I don't expect a win there. Um, it's also Austria Vienna and Rapid Vienna. I mean, given the situation, I would prefer an Austria win because that also means good stuff for Lars. But I think I maybe a draw is even better there. So let's see how it will go. And then you see also the upcoming come, come round where we have the championship decider between Salzburg and Sturm Graz. So it's rather early on with two rounds to go. Going back to Germany, uh, it was a rather crazy Friday evening. Uh, first of we have to talk Leverkusen Köln, where the big uh, question was, is this really a derby? Uh, Köln fans don't recognize Leverkusen uh, all that much as a serious club because they're all funded by the Bayer co company. And actually the big club in that region should be Köln, but uh, with the funding from Bayer, of course, Le Leverkusen has been much more successful as Köln is um, very much a train wreck. And then in addition to add a little bit of uh, oil onto the fire, Leverkusen asked for this game to be moved from Sunday to uh, Friday because of the Europa League without really consulting Köln, who were not very happy with all that. And there was a big thing. Now, I don't want to say a big thing. They all didn't want to say much, but they said a whole lot by not saying much. If you know what I mean, it must have felt so good for Köln to win this game. I, uh, from a jersey bracket, this was a very mismatch game because Köln played all in dark blue and Leverkusen in red and with black pants. I think the black pants or the blue pants by Köln, that just didn't uh, fit well together. In any case, Davis Elke scores two goals, Adli in, in, in between gets an equalizer, but overall this was a very, very good um, current performance who overall deserved the win, even though Leverkusen tried, but they had already a mindset on Roma. Mainz against Schalke. That was actually the big game. While in the first half it was all Leverkusen current in the sec second half, uh, Schalke and Mainz played a really, really interesting and tense game. Schalke had the halftime lead through Bülter after Salazar assist, then uh, Barrero equalizes uh, shortly after the half with Kraus shortly after pulling Schalke again in the lead. And this is a Schalke team that's really, really found their next level. They are really fighting, fighting for us for, 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 for survival. Sticking to a typically relegation threatened team that actually go on a run and can be dangerous to anyone. Because this is a Mainz team that actually has or had a decent shot potentially at European slots. It's not gonna happen probably because of that. However, they got a brilliant equalizer through Martin. What a brilliant free kick that, that, that was. But then in the end, it was a rather open back and forth game with, I thought, at least I felt, and maybe it's my sympathies for Schalke uh, also talking, but I felt that Schalke had a little bit more of that game. However, it was probably not meant to be. There was a lengthy injury break, which meant we already had, I think, an eight minute stoppage time added on. Got even worse because there was then a penalty route. It was a really weird CA situation. Uh, it's a cross that is deflected in the mind's box and it goes like lampoons and the goalie uh, is just jumping up and gets it. But before that, Berta is running towards him and is pushed back. A real uh, obvious short pull by a mind's defender. And Berta, of course, goes down. He probably didn't have a chance for the ball. And this is what the... Um, uh, Mainz coach uh, kind of yelled, there was no chance for for, for, for the ball and from that uh, Mainz even had then a nice counter-attacking chance. However, then there's the review and they decide, look at it and you see the clear short pull. I don't know why it took him so long to decide that it's a penalty for Schalke. Bülter steps up a commercial penalty in 90 plus 12, the latest Bundesliga goal ever scored, a goal that sent 
temporarily and even with all the other results sent Schalke out of the relegation zone for the first time this year. And a team that seemed to be dead and buried. I have been saying that Schalke is slowly get, get, getting results and building confidence. Um, they, are out the, they are out of it now. Not out of the relegation threat, but I think they have a good chance of actually surviving this. And that would be a minor mir miracle and a big shot in the arm for Schalke. Saying it right here, right now. If they survive, I will get another Schalke jersey uh, for sure. I have my eyes on one and that would be the trigger for me to get it. I would be very happy to see Schalke survive this relegation scrap. Um, however, I think for all the relegation threatened teams, there were not the results, all the results falling their way. I mean, Augsburg getting a win over Union Berlin was not, not expected. It's also that Union Berlin could have put a Good stepping stone towards Champions League qual qualification. This came cold, totally out of the blue. Gladbach over Bochum. 2 0 was more expected, but Bochum are now in real trouble. Um, Freiburg played another game against Leipzig. Uh, again, Leipzig mostly controlling game. It was a lot tighter. Freiburg kept, kept, kept tight, uh, but gave away chances that uh, Leipzig couldn't convert until Kevin Campbell does so and get another win. Leipzig moving into the champs, called probably stay there. A huge game was also between Hertha and Stuttgart, uh, which was probably on Friday, uh, on Saturday afternoon, the most entertaining game. Um, it was all the goals came in the first half through Kempf, who gave uh, Hertha the lead in the 29th. Gira C with a really nice attacking move equalizes for Stuttgart, but neither Lecker just before break gives Hertha the lead again. And then Stuttgart uh, desperately trying to get an equalizer. Which they could have lived more. I mean, Hertha need, needed points if they want to have any chance of survival. Um, but Stuttgart cannot get get, get the this, this was definitely a game that if Stuttgart gets something out there or even get a win, Hertha dead and buried. I appreciate that Stuttgart probably had this rough cup match just on Wednesday. So uh, this might have played uh, something there. And this could also go into deciding their relegation battle. Hertha gets it. Hertha are not done, are not dead yet, and Stuttgart are back in trouble. Uh, trouble is also at Eintracht Frankfurt. Despite them going through to the cup final, I said, I said already, it's a rather torrid season. They have not won in ages in the Bundesliga, and against Hoffenheim, who are relegation threatened, you actually were thinking that maybe with the high from the cup they could do something. No, Hoffenheim uh, took a lead through Baumgartner, then a rather soft penalty is converted by Kramaric, which sent everyone ballistic at Frank Frankfurt. On top of that, Bebu makes it 3-0 for Hoffenheim. Oliver Glasner is thrown off uh, with a red card. Coach, uh, and you know, everyone complaining. It uh, You could see the nerves are really, really tense in Frankfurt. Uh, but it is actually Nzoki who is sent off right after half for Hoffenheim and they think Frankfurt maybe have a chance. Götze pulls one back in the 54th and then nothing. And then a press conference where coach Glasner is asked a quick question if the, if the players don't do it, do you realize what's at stake, blah, blah. And he completely went ballistic. Um, Got um, got some stick then also from the club leadership. He apologized to the journal, the journalist, but it looks like that a successful period is in Frankfurt is coming to a rather rough end unless they win the cup. But it's the signs are um, very much that Glasner, the Glasner's uh, era is ending, and it's kind of this in the Bundesliga. Glasner two years. At Wolfsburg, now two years at Frankfurt, and then there's always some tension up top, which I find interesting because he at Lusk he seemed like so at ease for he had a four years with Lusk and it was not a problem at all. That is something, but I think he will be definitely getting a good next job. Let's finish with the title uh, fight. Bayern very unconvincing win at Bremen, but they were the better team. They had more of the game. They scored the goals through Gnabry and Sané. Schmidt very late pulls from back, but the miracle was not about to happen. Uh, I want to say unfortunately because it would have made it more interesting, but I think this was one of those key wins for Bayern. You don't play that super, but you get the win, and actually that could actually give you enough more motivation to now win out for the rest of the season because the title is in your own hand. Dortmund ran a riot over a Wolfsburg team who also had a chance for Euro European spots. 
However, Dortmund never let go of them. Uh, it's a 6 0 destruction with Adayemi running past them, scoring two, missing a penalty to make a hat trick. Uh, it's also uh, Sebastian Leon Marlin. So the whole attacking line scored in the first half. Bellingham also gets a brace in the sec second half. And as I said, uh, Adayemi misses. It was a really complete performance by Dortmund. Which means in the table they are staying up there with Bayern, only a point behind. And with the 6-0 they even boosted the goal difference a teeny bit. But they're not going to make that, that one up with three games remaining unless there's some fishy things going on. And I don't want to see that. Dortmund play the best this year. That has to be said. However, should they lose this title, it is not necessarily down to what happened last week. We began with a non-given penalty, which you know still needed to be converted. I think Dortmund lost its season in the first half before the World Cup, and potentially with this weird draw in Stuttgart. So there are the things that Dortmund need need to get a little bit more consistent, especially in the first half of the season, because they were, I think, go going into the World Cup. They were only in sixth place or something like that. Okay. Then they went on a run. Since then, they're the best team in Germany. But it may just not be enough to win this title, which is still very much in Bayern's hand, and Bayern are in control of that. Uh, it's also a three-way battle between Leipzig, Union and Freiburg, with a big game coming up there. Uh, but it seems like Leipzig will make that, and then Union Berlin have also the advantage over Freiburg. And on the bottom, the wins uh, for Augsburg and Hoffenheim put them kind of safeish, and it's now Schalke, Stuttgart for the rele relegation. Bochum have a slim chance. Hertha still have a steep hill to climb, um, which is of course also reflected in the expected standings. Upcoming round, I already said that there is a big one coming, Union Berlin against Freiburg. This is for the remaining Champions League spot. I also want to say Bayern Schalke might be a sleeper game because Schalke is really fighting. Not sure if they will, uh, they have it all to win against Bayern, but they have enough spirit going in there. Whereas this Gladbach team in the Borussia Derby is kind of a little bit uh, going sideways and I could very well see them flattened by Borussia Dortmund as well. Um, relegation, Köln, Hertha, Stuttgart, Leverkusen, we had already Schalke in there and Bochum play against Augsburg in another relegation six pointer. So um, that will keep on being interesting in the week after with Bayern against Leipzig, which is probably the best chance for Leipzig, for Bayern to drop points. However, Borussia Dortmund have to go to Augsburg, and Augsburg is close to Munich, and, you know, there's stuff like that. That was it for me from the Bundesliga. Please drop a line below if you want to add anything, have questions or anything else. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel for more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!